hello everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel today i just want to hit on some more pressing issues that africa is facing right now i feel like it's a very difficult time and you know already with the pandemic and everything that's just happening to have such issues arising at a moment like this so i just thought let me take um some time off and like just bring awareness to people who are not really aware of what is going on in africa right now because i have been in the dark because i've been seeing so many hashtags and i've been asking and i was like what's going on so i took some time to see exactly why people are hashtagging and why people are complaining and what's going on so we're going to start with nigeria okay so the the government established um a unit called the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, which an abbreviation is SARS, which is why you're seeing the hashtag SARS. And this unit was meant to handle any nuisances or any cases uh, that have been happening. So this includes internet scamming or just um, any mal malbehavior. So in the community the idea was for them to pledge to protect the community but what has been happening actually with SARS is that they have not been protecting the community but rather harassing the youth in Nigeria and this has led to deaths of youth um, allegedly this is led I'm just saying allegedly to you know because this is YouTube we can just be proclaiming things um, yeah so we've lost brothers and sisters uh, apparently if you had a special phone or you look a certain type of way you became a target if you refused to fall into their um, corrupt ways you became a, a victim to the violence so instead of protecting the, the the youth they extort harass and attack and kill the innocent youth so it's just against their pledge and another thing is they they are profiling youth with nice cars nice clothes for simply have or simply having an iphone assuming that they partake in fraud and engage in crime so you can't just have a nice item to yourself because then you become a target to harassment um size operatives will stop you go through your phone and force and force you to withdraw money from your atm while threatening to beat or kill you so our youth that are trying to build themselves that are trying to do something better with themselves instead of engaging in not promoting you know instead of engaging in useless activities or wasting their time are becoming targets of their own hard work what if you're you're just from a wealthy family and your family got you those stuff then it's just like so we can't gift our children anymore you know what i mean it's just so hard and then they also say they are known for from bluntly rob they're known for blunt robbery while being backed up by the law so these people are actually robbing these youth forcing them to, forcing them to give them money and stuff like that and the law backs them up because it's a special unit okay and then for so far nigerian youth have begun protesting on october the 8th a woman was shot for saying no to a policeman refusing his advances while a man was shot during the protest allegedly so the youth got tired basically on the 8th of October the youth got tired and started protesting these are worldwide protests and I remember Tio Savage calling out Beyonce and telling her the world needs to know what's going on currently in Nigeria don't just use Africans for their creativeness because you know there's a saying that people are in love with the black culture but are not in love with black people so Tio Savage called up Beyonce calling her to use all her special you know all her power Per se to try and bring awareness and help in the situation and then what can you do actually is use your voice on social media to inform the world about what is happening currently in Nigeria and hashtag and SARS so that's what happened but um, unfortunately on the 20th of October 2020 uh, a very sad thing happened this is when the, the children of Nigeria bled on their grounds fighting for their own rights uh, so government shut out in electricity and then instilled a curfew and pulled the trigger towards peaceful protests. I'm talking protesters that don't have guns, protesters that don't have, you know, they were not looting, they were not destroying government property or anything like that, but they were shot at. Um, a couple have lost their lives, but allegedly a couple have lost their lives, but we're hearing the one of the officials in Nigeria saying that uh, fortunately no one lost their life so it's kind of like and a lot of the people are very upset because the president of Nigeria right now is currently not saying anything as of the, the filming of this video has not said anything and it's kind of very alarming because when Black Lives Matter happened when George Floyd rest his soul passed away 
the whole world stood with the black community in the USA. The whole world stood with, you know, the cries of the people. And now we're having this situation happening. This is literally genocide happening for youth in Nigeria. And you don't have anybody, you know, apart from us fighting with us, you know what I mean? So it's kind of very unfortunate. So that's what's happening in Nigeria. We're on the 24th of October, and like a group of armed gunsmen went into a secondary school and shot at innocent children to show or, you know, like manifest a statement or give out a warning. I don't know. Children that are not engaged in any political matter, children that are just living their life, trying to grow up in this difficult world as it is today, were shot at. They died yesterday. Okay, so this was on the 24th of October in Cameroon. And so uh, a lot of people think it's Boko Haram that did these horrible acts, but I'm just saying, why are we attacking children? It's bad enough what attacking innocent people, but children, children. My, I have a little sister and a little brother, and a little sister, I have two little sisters and, and a little brother. And just to the thought of them not being safe in a school, an institution that is supposed to protect and educate them. Not because the teachers failed, but because some grown-ups have a disagreement or a dispute. I really can't wrap my head around it. It's very difficult to comprehend such information, you know what I mean? And so I'm just, I'm just boggled. In the Cameroonian city of Kumba, at the Mother Francisca International Bilingual Academy, grim scenes of a massacre. A classroom covered in blood following Saturday's deadly attack. This student survived. People were crying. People were shouting. By then, I never knew that they were killing people here. So after they are done, they ran away. Before, when we were running away, I saw dead bodies lying here, some lying unconscious. Several students were killed and a dozen more wounded when attackers armed with guns and machetes stormed the school. When this parent heard about the news, she ran to find her daughter. She was alive but injured and bleeding. When I ran in there and I met my child, she was helpless and was, she was shouting, Mom, please help me. And I told him, it is only your God that can save you now. I am just, I'm just your mother, but it is only God that can save you because it's, it is God that gave you to me now to Liberia. So this is what is currently happening in Liberia. Rape has increased by 50% in Liberia during the pandemic against young women and children. Over 1,000 cases of rape have been reported within the last 10 months. Rape has been a growing issue in Liberia. In Liberia's 14-year civil war from 1989 to 2003, President George Bush, Bush okay, President George, <laughs> has declared a rape national emergency. So our young girls are not safe in Liberia right now during this pandemic. First of all, they're not getting the full education that they need. Already females are struggling in this war of equity and equality. And now 50% more rape. This touches my soul because in Malawi just a few days ago, a young girl was found being raped in the act by an older man. This was a young girl less than 14 years old and she was bleeding. And instead of people helping her, they were busy filming it. And you know, it just pisses me off so much because I have a, I have two beautiful little sisters. Two beautiful little sisters. I can't imagine anybody touching them in a way that makes them or harms I mean makes them uncomfortable or harms them. You know, people tend to I'm just it's just really overwhelming and really stressful as a young woman to be hearing such statistics. So Liberia has now its hashtag, um, it's, it's a hashtag rape national emergency in Liberia and that's what's currently happening in Liberia. Philomena.com, we are visiting a very serious issue here in Liberia, rape. If you follow me over the years, you know this is not my first time tackling the subject, but it hasn't stopped the issue. Over the last seven months, there have been over 900 rapes, a lot of them not receiving any justice. 
So today, you'll be going along with the Stop Rape campaign in Liberia. It's a three-day march all across Monrovia to demand justice for the victims and stop rape in Liberia. Stay tuned. Namibia youth have been protesting demanding immediate political action on sexual gender-based violence in Namibia. There has been at least 200 cases of domestic violence reported monthly while, there, while more than 1,600 cases of rape were reported within the past two years. So in, in Namibia, females are not safe. <laughs> well, well, okay, let me tell you what also really gets to me is I am about to graduate there is a high chance I am going back to Africa and to read and see the situations that are currently happen happening in Africa is like, is it, is it safe? How do, you, how do you expect me to feel? How do you expect me to make decisions to wholeheartedly go back if such situations are happening? You know what I mean? So, gender-based violence, a man who beats a woman does not show strength but he shows weakness. If you cannot communicate and solve problems with your partner or a female and you resort to throwing your hands at her then my brother you are not you are not strong you are weak you are weak-minded that's what is happening so don't get fooled don't fool yourself about 100 protesters gathered at the Vinduk magistrate's court in solidarity with the suspects as they waited for the appearance of the accused the protesters were however blocked by the police not to enter the court. The demonstrators were arrested for allegedly violating provisions of the Public Gatherings Act and COVID-19 regulations limiting gatherings to 50 persons during a protest against incidences of rape, murder and assault against women and children countrywide. The accused were expected to appear in the Venduk Magistrates Court. Another thing that's happening is in the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo, Armed groups have been brutally attacking innocent civilians, causing more than five, like causing more than 50,000 people to flee their homes. A great number of those are children who do not have parents or guardians. Many people are becoming victims of rape, killing, kidnapping, and sexual violence. So in the DRC, we are now orphaning children. We are orphaning children. Do you understand how much of a setback this is? Africa t tries to take two steps forward and then we take 10 backwards, okay? So how is civil unrest supposed to help the country? Explain that to me. Maybe I am failing to understand, but... And who is this I'm grouped anyway? <sighs> Anyone who can take another human's life, anyone who can offend a child, does not deserve anything good in their life at all, okay? And now we are looking at child labor, where we have a bunch of children being put to work in these mines to fund some minerals used or I mean primary materials used for development of your smartphone of your smartphone of my smartphone how can we sleep how can we sleep you know a patrol by Congolese soldiers and UN peacekeepers in the Beni region and no one to be seen in several villages People say they are facing unprecedented attacks by the Allied Democratic Forces. The ADF originated in Western Uganda in the 1990s to fight for the creation of an Islamic State. Their rebellion was crushed by Ugandan forces. ADF fighters then crossed the border into the neighboring DRC, where they've remained for nearly 20 years. Human rights campaigners in Beni say more than 400 Congolese have been killed in the last one month alone. Hundreds have fled their homes. There's no one here because of the attack that happened last week. People are afraid to come back. Only soldiers are patrolling. Security forces have increased patrols in remote areas where the attacks have been happening. 64 people were killed in this village of Mamove last week. The attacks are happening at the same time as a government offensive against the ADF. Security forces say since their campaign started last October, they've killed dozens of ADF fighters, including top commanders. They say other fighters have been captured and their bases destroyed. We must defeat ADF. They are terrorists. We call upon all people of DRC to support us so we can neutralize the enemy and help civilians return to their homes. 
In Ivory Coast and Ghana, there has been an increased child labor and trafficking in Ghana and Ivory Coast. Children are being trafficked from Burkina Faso and Mali to work in Ghana and Ivory Coast as cocoa farms as slaves. So slavery within our own country. We are already, we are, I don't even know how to fail, put it. We are still recovering from slavery of our ancestors. We know the consequences of enslaving a people. Now we are enslaving our own children, our own future. <laughs> wow, Africa. Wow. Wow. Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana together produce nearly 60% of the world's cocoa every year. But latest estimates agree that between 1.4 and 2 million children engage in hazardous work on cocoa farms in these two countries. Child labor, as described by the International Labor Organization, defines it as being mentally, physically, socially, or morally dangerous and harmful to children. Everyone loves chocolate. Three million tons of it are consumed every year, half of it in Europe. But the success of chocolate has a dark side. While first world kids are enjoying the sweet taste, reality is rather different for Africa's children. According to a wide range of organizations, the chocolate industry is accused of covering up the trafficking of children and the use of child labor on the cocoa plantations. These children are vulnerable to brutal labor practices, including trafficking and slavery. Let's go on in South Africa. Now, this is getting, it's hitting home because I was there, okay? In South Africa, battles against gender-based violence and rape. It is estimated that at least 40% of South African women will get raped once in her life. The hashtag is, am um, I next? I was in South Africa. South Africa is still crying over xenophobic attacks. South Africa is still crying over unsafety, lack of security in their country. South Africa is crying over gender-based violence. I have experienced the insecurity in South Africa where I was robbed in broad daylight, 5 p.m. at a mall. Okay, I was robbed. If you want to watch that video, I have a link and you, it's like here. So yeah, South Africa, I was there when females were protesting. I was part of those protests in Stellenbosch University, where now we have to, as females, you can't even ride an Uber. You, you don't even feel safe in an Uber alone. You don't know if the Uber driver is to trust. You don't feel safe to walk in broad daylight alone. Why are we raising a community of fear? During apartheid, black people, were unable to walk the streets alone and feel safe. How are you able to do that to your own females now? Explain that to me. You know what it feels like. Why are we doing it to our own people? It makes no sense. It was a case of a man who raped his 20 month old baby. Who does that? You know, there's obviously a sickness in the society that has to be dealt with. So what will work? How do we heal South Africa? South 
Africa has among the highest stats in the world around GBV and violence against women. One in three women in South Africa will experience sexual attacks. Two in five women will be beaten by their domestic partners. Between 30 and 40% of women have experienced sexual uh, um, or physical intimate partner violence in their lifetime. It's really a society where violence has become normalized. So that is currently what is happening. We have unsafe children, unsafe women, unsafe youth. All vulnerable groups, all people that need our help and our support, all people that just want to feel safe. So what are we doing about it? What are you doing about it? I would encourage us to raise awareness, donate to organizations, trusted organizations that are fighting against such. Go to the peaceful protest if you must, but Africa needs to change. Africa needs to see action. We are the generation of tomorrow. We are the youth of tomorrow. We are building a better future for our own children. I am 24 years old. How do you expect me to be comfortable to give birth to a child in this world today? Hmm? How do you expect me to feel safe in this world today. So yeah, that's my video today. I just wanted to bring on awareness. Make sure you follow the hashtags, use the hashtags, raise awareness. I'm gonna be putting the hashtags down in the bio, in my bio, which you can use, raise awareness. Don't be part of the crime by being silent. Don't be silenced, use your voice and let the world know that we ain't taking this we're not taking it. So yeah, I am sorry for ranting. My channel is usually a more happy place. I don't rant. I don't, you know, I don't go into political issues. This is my first ever political video. I don't do that. But I felt today, I felt it was too much. I felt like I was being violated. I am not in Africa, but I felt that violation. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video, let the world know that Africa is bleeding. <laughs>